Hello everybody, welcome to video number 23 in my Richard Lehman horror novel review series and today I'm talking about Beware from 1985. So there is the cover art by Steve Crisp as usual, I like it a lot. Um, the images in this picture might seem a bit random but they do make sense if you know the, the story of the book. And I like it, it's a very well composed image given the, the material. There's the spine, it's one of Lehman's shorter books at 279 pages, all of his early work was roughly that length. And here's the back which says, the supermarket shouldn't have been shut, it wasn't normal for Elsie to quit early. But then it wasn't normal for a meat cleaver to fly through the air by itself, or for a guard dog locked in overnight to end up like hamburger meat. Or for Elsie herself to feature on the butcher's slab, neatly wrapped and jointed. There's weird things happening in the town of Oasis, and certain folks, like hotshot local reporter Lacey Allen, had better beware. Yeah, well, uh, there would probably be a few spoilers in this review, because um, it's not easy, really, to give my thoughts on it without going into some of the plot details, so just be warned, or beware, of that. So this is an odd one, because I had read this book once before, some time ago, and I didn't really remember anything about it going into this reread, other than two uh, details. The first one is that it involved an invisible man, and that, I think, is why I didn't like it the first time, but liked it this time. And the second detail is that I, I didn't like it the first time, like I just said, I really almost hated it. Whereas this, on this rereading, I had a really good time with this. And I do think it comes down to the, I, to the fact that the first time I read it, I was expecting something very different. From the opening, I thought this was going to be a ghost story, and I love ghost stories. But it's not, it's this very odd tale of, an, of a guy who's been made invisible. So knowing that detail on this second reading allowed me to not be disappointed by the big reveal and to just enjoy it for what it is because there is a lot to enjoy here so let me get into the the review then so it begins really well with this couple going to a supermarket to buy some beer but unusually the supermarket is closed for the night it shouldn't be it should be open so they do some basic investigation and while they're doing that, this, uh, like, what I mean is they'd like peer through the windows to try to understand what's going on. Where is Elsie, the woman who owns the store? Why is it locked up? And as they're doing this, there's an almighty uh, bang at the door, which scares them and they run off, run off to the nearest bar. And in that bar, we come up, we meet our main group of characters. This is uh, Elsie, the, well, at least the main group of characters for the beginning of the book. Elsie, the woman who owns the supermarket, and Lacey, the reporter, who is going to be the heroine of the story. So they go to investigate, and, and it's a really good opening, like I said, because you honestly think that it's a ghost story. You can't figure out how is all of this happening. Whoever's doing all these things, how is he not being seen? And you wouldn't think it's an invisible man story, because that's ridiculous. Um, but it is an invisible man story. So what's going on? Well, there is a cult, and this cult um, is some kind of... I don't actually know what it is, because Lehman doesn't really go into who this cult is, what it is, what they want, what their aims are. They, they just basically seem to get together in their cells and have orgies, and, and perform some kind of black magic rituals, which give them some kind of power. It's odd, because throughout the novel we find out that this cult has infiltrated pretty much every power structure of the USA. They're, they're in the, the Tucson, Arizona Police Department. They're in the editorial staff of newspapers. So you would think that for something that pervasive, it, it, would, it would have a goal, but Lehman doesn't really go into what this cult is or what they want. And that's a, an underwritten part of the novel, which, which is a disadvantage of it. But, all right, anyway, so there is this cult, and for whatever reason, they decide to make Sammy Hoffman, who's the villain of the story, invisible. And he then does what any layman villain would do if granted invisibility, which is go on a, a rape and murder spree across America. And a lot of the book uh, concerns that. There is an enormous amount of rape in this book, and uh, murder and violence, and usual layman allusions to paedophilia. Thankfully, the paedophilia isn't described quite in the detail as it is in something like The Cellar, but it's still there, so be warned about that. If you're put off by that, it is here. 
and it is kind of uh, skin crawling when it appears the way that it's described. So I can certainly see why a lot of people are put off by this book. This is one of his uh, lower ranked novels, and this is one of the very few layman books which already have reviews on YouTube, and they're negative reviews. People dismiss this as being silly and, and garbage and badly written. I don't think I can argue with the um, idea that it's it's silly, because it certainly is an invisible man. And it's also very um, underdeveloped in some of it. I mean, the cult aspect of it, that's the main problem with this book, because it's such an essential part of the story, but we, ne we honestly never find out who on earth this cult is, or what do they want. So there's no real reason to fear what they do, other than the violence they carry out upon people who, who try to leave it or who betray it. But it, I think this is a very rare example of a layman novel that could have been longer. Usually I tend to think layman's books could have been uh, trimmed down if, by cutting out some of the all the sex scenes and the fixation with breasts. But this is one where I think another 100 pages would have been welcome here to find out who this cult is. Uh, let me give an example of an underwritten aspect of the story. Sammy Hoffman is the villain of the piece and how he falls in with this cult is just really kind of unbelievable because apparently he's on the run having already raped someone and he's in a bar and he gets acquainted over some drinks with a guy who is a member of this cult who is about to go and, and execute a reporter. And so the guy says, okay, you sound like a guy I can trust. Would you like to be my my getaway driver on this job I'm about to do, I'll pay you a thousand dollars. This cult is depicted as being a, a very organized um, organization which can reach the highest levels of government. I mean, they're planning to execute the president and the vice president of the USA. It's just not very likely that this guy would go into this execution and just find his getaway driver in a bar an hour before he's due, due, due to do the job. Little things like that. I know it's maybe pedantic. Uh, you, we don't really expect um, great depth from Layman, but it's it's an odd book. It really is because it has some of the the worst of his early writing, but there are also hints of what's to come. There's the hint of his maturity. Like it has all of his immaturity from his novels like The Woods Are Dark and Night Show and All Hallows Eve, all of his early stuff. But it also shows the... Um, control of a narrative that he would develop very soon after this book in the two three four years following this this is an excellently paced novel so like I said it, it is an odd mix if, if you've done what I've done and just read nothing but Richard Lehman for the last three months and you're very in tune with his style and you know all of his quirks it's fascinating to see this it's it's right in the middle of his immature early period and his uh, his classic mid period there was a line that kind of made me laugh on somewhere here, which is a very, and there it is. She seemed to have an exaggerated fear of burning. It's such a clunky line. I mean, can, can you have an exaggerated fear of burning? You can have an exaggerated fear of spiders or of heights, you know, because those things are not generally not intrinsically dangerous. You know, those are irrational fears, but I don't think the fear of being burned alive can ever really be exaggerated. And it, there are many, many examples like that, of just like clunky, poorly thought out lines, which are straight out of his early work. But then you will get passages of just exhilarating action, something that only he could do. So no more to say about the story of this. Um, Basically, yeah, so Sammy is a villain and he's going on, he's killing and raping everyone. And one of the people he rapes at the beginning of the novel is our heroine, who is called Lacey. She's a local reporter. And she uh, ends up falling in with a guy called Scott. She meets him in a, when she's on the run in a hotel, by a hotel pool. Naturally, they fall instantly in love with each other because it's Richard Lehman. Uh, we also meet the other another guy called Matthew Duquesne who is a friend of Scott and this trio will end up being the people who take on Sammy the villain and the cult. Let me talk about why I had a good time with this book. I've already kind of mentioned it. It's about the pace of it. This is pure action. It's similar to a novel I reviewed earlier called Midnight's Lair in that it's no, by no means a great novel. There's nothing groundbreaking going on here. There's nothing, there are no characters that you'll remember once you, once you finish the book. But it does a very difficult thing. It describes constant 
action. And that's something that I don't know of any other horror writer, including Stephen King, who could do that so consistently. Right from the beginning, from the first page, you are hooked, or at least I was hooked in this story. And like I said, once I knew that it wasn't a ghost story, it was an invisible man story, I was able to just not, you know, not be bothered by that and just let the, let the story take me. And it did. There is not a dull page on this book. Uh, even the sex scenes are scaled down. They're not, they're not as uh, obtrusive as they can be with Layman. They're not as cringeworthy as they can be with Layman. So all in all, this, uh, this was a bit of a surprise because I remembered disliking it the first time. I was expecting to dislike it this time, but I didn't. I had a great time with it. So for that reason, I'm going to recommend it, but uh, I will just uh, beware, again, just to labour that, beware that you may actually hate it if you've not read it before. And if you're not familiar with Richard Lehman and his style and all the stuff he does, if you're not prepared for all the, all the rapes that are in this book, I think this might be a record breaker for the number of rapes he describes in one book. <clears throat> um, like I said, if you're not a Lehman fan, then you might not like this because all that stuff I've just mentioned, all the trashy aspects of his of his work, that's what we layman fans actually love about him. Yes, we roll our eyes. Yes, we cringe uh, when he describes sex. We, uh, I at least, uh, audibly groan when he attempts to do dialogue, which is anything other than threats of violence. Um, but that's that's why I love this guy, and I think it's why his fans love him so. Let me wrap this one up. Beware from 1985. I like it a lot. Thank you for watching this, and I'll be back soon with another video. Until that time, take care of yourselves, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.